morning. Welcome to, our, welcome to our service on this, the second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. To our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel reading appointed for this morning is taken from Mark's Gospel, uh, chapter 8, beginning to read from verse 31. Jesus then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him, along with his disciples, and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? But what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the um, requirements of the season of Lent for a Christian is to repent. Now that's not a popular word in today's secular word, world, is it? In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if some that have listened so far to this homily have switched off already by hearing me say the word repent. But that is because they don't understand it. The thing is, it isn't a horrible, demanding request at all. But it is just asking us to stop and think, am I moving in the right direction? Should I turn around? Should I return home? Jesus in our reading today is determined. He is determined to fulfill his destiny and complete his earthly mission. And it seems folly to Peter and the rest of the disciples, but God's plan is very often different to our own. We humans are very good at being contrary and doing things we think are in our best interests, when very often they are not. Jesus repeatedly said throughout his earthly ministry that he is searching for the lost, those that have lost their way. And he told us parables, he told us stories about it. The lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son, or the prodigal son, as the story is known. Looking for the lost, Jesus tells us on numerous occasions that God doesn't want to lose anyone. These parables of Jesus tell us of the rejoicing when the sheep is brought back to the fold, when the coin turns up, and when the lost son returns home. God goes the extra mile to find those that are lost, to bring them home, to bring them back in union with him. Why? Because we are the beloved of God. And that's not just those who sit in church on a Sunday, but the whole of humanity. I spend a lot of my time with people who do not come to church. They may be baptised, they may not. They may well be of a different faith or of no faith at all, but they are still loved by God. Those who come to church might say, oh, well, that's all very well and good, Vicar, but if that's the case, what are we doing here? Why do we come to church if we could stop at home and still be the beloved of God? 
The answer to those people is easy. You know you are the beloved of God, or at least you should do. Imagine trying to get through life not knowing that. For when you know that you are the beloved of God, your response is to come to worship him. The God that created everything that there is knows you and loves you personally and intimately. He has given you everything and wants to give you more. Now when you know that, it creates or should create a worshipful response. Do you remember in the story we had a couple of weeks ago at the River Jordan when Jesus was baptised? He hears the incredible voice and others hear it around him too and some of them hear it as thunder. You are my beloved son and on you my favour rests, God said. That vision was not just about Jesus. It is also about you and me. Jesus came to share his identity with you and to tell you that you are the beloved sons and daughters of God. The Roman Catholic priest Henri Nguyen wrote, just for a moment, try to understand that you, like Jesus, are the beloved daughter or the beloved son of God. This is the truth. And what is more, your belovedness happened before you were even born. The psalmist puts it like this, you knew me before I was born, you knew me before you knitted me in my mother's womb. Your eyes foresaw my deeds and they were all recorded in your book. You were the beloved before your father, mother, brother, sister or church loved you or hurt you. You are the beloved because you belong to God from all eternity. So what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. God loved you before you were born and God will love you after you die. In the scriptures it says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. This is the fundamental truth about you. This is who you are, whether you feel it or not. You belong to God from eternity to eternity. What this life is for, what this life is about, while you are here, you have an opportunity to tell God that you love him too. And to do that out of your own free will. This is what repentance is. It means a turnaround. It means drop all that leads to self and self-indulgence and turn to God who loves you and wants you to love him back. You are sent into the world to believe in yourself as God's chosen one and then to help your brothers and sisters know that they are also the beloved sons and daughters of God too. You are sent into the world to be a people of reconciliation and to bring back to the fold those who need to understand what repentance is and what it means for them and for God. When that happens, it says in Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 10, for every single one that turns to God, there is joy in the presence of the angels. Amen. And so let us pray. And the prayers today are prepared for us by Gladys Helmer. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you with gratitude for your great goodness to us in every aspect of our lives. Forgive us when we forget to stay in touch. Help us to make time to be aware of your presence with us and to listen to your quiet voice speaking to our hearts. We have so much to thank you for and have so many concerns as we converse with you as our friend. Help us to see things more clearly and discern how we can serve you better. Lord, thank you for the beautiful world you have created in which we live. As we look towards the season of spring, our spirits rise each day as we are aware of all kinds of new life emanating around us. Forgive those who wittingly or unwittingly damage your creation and disregard the purity of the environment that all depend upon for air to breathe and food to eat. May we make every effort to respect, preserve and conserve all the good gifts you lay before us and sing your praise in everlasting thankfulness and joy. 
Lord, thank you that in this time of isolation brought on by the pandemic, many of us are able to keep in touch with families and friends through the remarkable technology we now have that also enables us to be aware of what is happening all around us and in the world. St Nicholas Church has successfully been able to utilise technology in order to reach out to much of the community in your name. And we are so grateful that many have enjoyed special services. Children have still met up for Jesus and Me, Jam, and many adult groups have continued holding meetings, all via Zoom. The church website is a great comfort and enables parishes, but the parishioners to see and take part in our morning worship like today. This has been replicated all over the country and daily we hear stories of Good Samaritans supplying life-giving support to those in need. We are also thankful for the great contribution of our key workers keeping the wheels of life turning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for the coronavirus vaccine and the progress of the immunisation programme, which is reaching deep into our into communities. So much we can now look forward with some confidence to a time when everyone will be protected. We give thanks that our government is also providing vaccines for poorer countries in collaboration with other developed nations. We mourn for the huge numbers of people who have been lost all over the world to this cruel disease and our humble gratitude goes out to the medical and caring professions that have given their all to bring comfort, healing and dignity to so many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we, thank, we ask you for your mercy upon all innocent families caught up in conflicts around the world, especially in Yemen, where there is so much distress caused by years of hunger and deprivation. May this terrible war be stopped to bring this, in, this suffering to an end. We pray for the many millions of people around the world who are governed by regimes that have no respect for human rights, where minority groups are persecuted, and where peaceful protest is met with violence. Help us all to guard our Christian values in our fast-changing world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who are sick as a result of the coronavirus or from any other affliction that they may be healed. In our own community, we pray for those that may be known to us and we name them in the silence of our hearts. And at this time, we also pray for the souls of the dearly departed, whom we think of in the silence of our hearts. May they rest in peace. Bless and comfort their families and friends who are in mourning. May they entrust their loved ones to your greater care in a place of eternal love and peace where there is no more pain and anguish. Amen. Now listen to a piece of music. Oh Lord my God, when I
So let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.